As the Final Fantasy franchise heads into the new millennium, Square had big plans for the series. One of these new titles would serve as Sakaguchi's swan song for the franchise. Up until this point, the series had been evolving and challenging the notion of what it meant to be a fantasy game. Namely, the most recent games had aspects of more modern and sci-fi influences. This ninth title, however, was going to go back to its roots. Final Fantasy IX was going to serve as a love letter to the series thus far. However, Final Fantasy IX also had many original concepts and ideas that the later games in the series would take inspiration from. And so today, we'll be looking at almost all the Final Fantasy IX references in Final Fantasy XIV. As always, this will contain major story elements for both Final Fantasy IX and Final Fantasy XIV, including a major story reference in the Endwalker. So consider this your spoiler warning. Final Fantasy IX was released for the original PlayStation in the year 2000. The game goes back to a more medieval setting, and a lot of the characters take the role of traditional Final Fantasy jobs. One of these characters is named Zidon Tribal, who takes on the role of the Final Fantasy Thief. Zidon's outfit is available in Final Fantasy XIV. It is obtainable after subscribing to the game for 150 days. While Moogles have been in the franchise since Final Fantasy III, there are certain Moogles around Final Fantasy XIV who were responsible for the mailing service in Eorzea. This is very similar to the role Moogles take in Final Fantasy IX, in which they have a service known as the Mognet, a mailing service between the Moogles. In Final Fantasy XIV, there is even its own delivery Moogle quest, which can be seen as a reference to the Mognet. And one last reference to the Moogles is the Summoner and Scholar book that has a pop-up Moogle writing into its book. This is very similar to when the Moogles in Final Fantasy IX write into their books for the player to save their game. In the Heavensward Hildebrand quests, we meet a mammoth named Gigi. Throughout the expansion, we see the little guy go through an identity crisis. Later, it is revealed that his real name is Vivi and he was created by a Charlian scholar by the name of Quan. This is an entire reference to Vivi and his grandfather in Final Fantasy IX, although Vivi's identity crisis was taken much more seriously in Final Fantasy IX. The wind-up Gigi also appears as its own minion in Final Fantasy XIV. In the Summoner Stormblood quests, there is a character known as Sari, who comes from the ancient city of Medain. This is a reference to the lost summoner city of Medane Sari in Final Fantasy IX. In the starting quest for Dancer, we hear a familiar tune known as Vamo alla Flamenco. This music comes from Final Fantasy IX and has been played several times including during the duel in the play I Want to Be Your Canary. Speaking of the play, the theater troupe Tantalus uses an airship known as the Prima Vista, which also appears in Final Fantasy XIV. There is a woman on the ship known as Mikoto, which can be seen as a possible reference to Zidane and Kuja's sister, Mikoto. And before we move on, there are two jonglers of Yulmore that have a resemblance to Zorn and Thorn from Final Fantasy IX. The similarities don't stop there, however, as both duos serve under an antagonist with quite sizable proportions. In Endwalker, we get a new 4v4 mode known as the Crystalline Conflict. The music within this new mode uses a variation of the Festival of the Hunt music and a reorchestration of the music Run from Final Fantasy IX.
Not quite references, but similarities and parallels between the two stories. The Ashians follow many of the same aspects found in the story of Final Fantasy IX, namely fusing the worlds together to bring back an old world. In Final Fantasy IX, Garland had sought to fuse Gaia and Terra to bring back the world of Terra along with their people. This is very similar to the Ashian goals, and much more prominently with Emmet Selk's goal to rejoin the first with the source. Another parallel comes with the faces during the fight with Hades. This is very similar to the scene in Ovalert, where the faces on the wall tell the story of Terra. There are a few dungeons that have a similarity with locations found in Final Fantasy IX. The first is the Anti Tower, which is a dungeon that has a unique property of being upside down. This is very similar to Ipsum's Castle, which had the same property of being upside down. The second dungeon is found in Endwalker, the Iteoscope. This dungeon is very similar to the final part of Memoria in Final Fantasy IX, in which it's located with an area surrounded by crystals, leading to the Mother Crystal at the end of the dungeon. And finally, we have the Weeping City of Mach. This raid dungeon uses a lay motif in its music that directly references the battle theme of Final Fantasy IX. One of the bosses within this raid dungeon is Ozma. This boss first appeared in Final Fantasy IX as a super boss. Ozma again reappears in the Baldessian arsenal as Proto Ozma, and clearing BA at least once awards you with the Ozma mount. While Final Fantasy IX wasn't the first appearance of Alexander, it was the first appearance of an Alexander with angel wings. Alexander in Final Fantasy XIV also appears with wings during the second half of the fight. In a vision, it's shown that Alexander had the power to stop Dalamud and thus the reawakening of Bahamut. This could be a subtle reference to the fight between Bahamut and Alexander in Final Fantasy IX, where Alexander stops Bahamut's attack on Alexandria. Another boss in the Alexander Raid is found in the Heart of the Creator. This boss is known as the Cruise Chaser. Cruise Chaser is actually a reference to both Final Fantasy IX and another square property, Cruise Chaser Blasty, where this boss gets its name from. Cruise Chaser also references the Arc Boss and Summon from Final Fantasy IX. In fact, the Lapis Lazuli that show up during the fight reference a mechanic where the more Lapis Lazuli gems the player has in their inventory, the more damage it will do during its summon attack. And speaking of the summon attack, Cruise Chaser can also cast Eternal Darkness, which is named after the summon attack from Final Fantasy IX. The Cruise Chaser mount can also be bought from the Mog Station. You suddenly find yourself alone at the end of the universe. 
Your friends that have accompanied you have sacrificed themselves in order for you to continue on. And so you walk. But in your stride, you start to remember all the people that you have met, all the friends you have made. You start to remember all the words that have kept you going throughout the years. You are reminded that you are truly not alone. In another world, someone else is fighting another battle. Believing that he is nothing but a pawn for destruction, Zidane retreats and isolates himself. But at his lowest point, his friends come to his aid. They tell him how much they mean to him. They try to tell him that their lives wouldn't be the same without him. As he walks, he is reminded of all the good he has done for the world. He is reminded that he is not alone. These two moments, over 20 years apart, tell similar stories. No matter what struggles you have lived in your life, you have still managed to walk through. You may still face challenges along the way, but you can still persevere through it. And in these two moments, they both say the same powerful message. Whether through the title of the music or the title of the quest, just remember, you are not alone. Final Fantasy IX managed to tell a brilliant story while also paying tribute to its predecessors. It brought about all the amazing aspects of what it meant to be a Final Fantasy, but it also paved the way for future Final Fantasies as a lot of aspects are still seen within the later installments. And the love that Final Fantasy IX gave towards the series can still be felt, especially in Final Fantasy XIV. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. It will always be appreciated. And in the next video, we'll be looking at the world of Final Fantasy X.